Hello guys, welcome back to another video today with me, ARC Exotics. Now, I know a few people said that this intro is very um, like generic and I always say that, but that is just an easy way to start the video. So, welcome back to another video. Um, and in this video, basically, what we're going to be talking about is the thing just above me. Not the tank, but the whiteboard. We're going to be talking about the absolute importance of monitoring and keeping an eye on your animals but not by physically looking at them we're going to be talking about the importance of having a weighing scale chart for your animals so keeping an eye on their weight if they're feeding if they're not feeding if they're dropping weight increasing weight for breeding and loads of different things time of year so basically we're going to be talking to you about the importance of having your own weigh chart in your reptile room so let's get into it now this is quickly a little run through of my weighing chart now obviously we have a lot more animals than this but this is just the weighing chart for this specific room not anything else so in this room we have Gus, Rolo, Freddo and Spyro now before any of you wonder about Spyro the only reason he is only started on August is because that is when we got him but as far as the other things go you can see that there's a lot of growth in weight now we're going to talk to you specifically about Freddo, the Pac-Man frog, because we've had a little bit of trouble with him, and we can see why, because he's dropped from 36 to 34, dropping a couple of grams. Now, again, it doesn't look like a lot, but from what we fed him, it is a lot. So basically, we want to be talking to you in this a little bit more detail. So now we've moved down to Freddo's tank. And basically, we're going to be talking to you about this little guy, because if it wasn't for us monitoring his chart, then we wouldn't have potentially known of a life-threatening um, sort of illness, I'd say, potentially, or parasite. So basically, this guy is just chilling in the corner, and you wouldn't think nothing is wrong with him. But we weighed him. We have a look here. So we weighed him in July, and he was 36 grams. We weighed him in August, we weigh him the last Sunday of every month, and he was 34, meaning that he'd lost a couple of grams. Now, on that July, he weighed 36, and he had two pinky mice as food for that month. And that's the first time he's had mice in his diet. So, obviously, with all the protein they come with, he should have gained weight massively. Well, not massively, but he definitely shouldn't have lost weight for sure. Now, us physically looking at him, we wouldn't have known that he'd lost any weight because he looks the exact same size. You can't really tell when you see your own animal every day. You can't really tell it getting bigger or smaller. That is why, again, it's important to weigh your animals. Now, we didn't know that he actually lost weight, but looking on here at how rapidly he gained weight, from May to June, he went from 19 to 24 and then 24 to 36 so he's done a considerable jump every single time now if we didn't weigh him we wouldn't have known that he'd actually had gone down in weight and we wouldn't have physically seen it because that is something you don't physically see you're not going to see a couple of grams difference in your animal by looking at them that can only be determined by the scales now he also went off his food and developed a sort of slimy coat which could mainly be caused from humidity issues but on second thoughts, we actually fed him a locust and he was eating much less. When he took the locust, I saw a little worm hang out of his mouth. I basically had a little bit of googling, got hold of the vet, and it is basically a ringworm, which is a parasite. Now, he's been fully treated and cured. So basically what we're going to do is just continue his diet of locusts, lay off the mice for a little while, and hopefully at the end of this month, he should go up and wait again. But what I'm saying is, yes, I did see the parasite physically, but still, I knew there was an issue because he dropped weight. That is why the importance of a weighing chart is really, really critical. And obviously we have to pay him his wage for featuring on the channel. So we'll see if he wants a... Gone. I was about to say we shall see if he wants a locust, but by the looks of that, yes, he does. And like I say, he's eating much more regular much more consistent and he's doing really well so let's hope that this little guy makes a full recovery 
Enjoy, buddy. So, for another little example with the weight chart, when we got Gus, and for those of you that don't know, Gus is our leopard tortoise. When we got him, he was actually getting fed the complete incorrect diet. Now, we were obviously following this for a short period of time because that's what we got told. Before doing our research even more and looking into it, we found that it's extremely controversial to what they do eat and what they don't eat. And he was actually getting fed on a lot of lettuces and vegetables, which for a leopard tortoise is not good. It should be about 90% weeds. So from May when we first got him, we weigh all of our animals on the date we get him. He was 56. And then one month later, he took a really big jump to 70. And once he was on the right diet of weeds, he went from 70 to 75 and is making gradual jumps. Whereas when he was on the incorrect thing, his weight was massively lower. So that also tells you that your husbandry is correct and that things are in place for that. So we know that he's on the correct diet and we could see this from the chart referring to his weight being a massive increase and then not being a massive increase in July. It's just a steady incline instead of a big jump. And this little boy is Gus for those wondering. And he's a happy little guy. He'll probably come up to me in a minute because he can hear me talking about him. And there we go, he's pulsing away. He's looking at me, he's not dumb. Oh, he's done a little yawn for the camera and a wink. <laughs> Go on, Gus. Oh, and here he comes. This little guy is absolutely lovely. He's got such a personality. And if I was to go all the way over here, he would still end up coming to me. Because he's just a little cutie. In ya. Hey. But that is little Gus, and he eats like an absolute horse. And like I said to you guys, it is pretty controversial to what they do eat and what they don't eat. So I'm going to be doing a full video to cover this anyway, because it is massively debated in the tortoise keepers sort of hobby. Um, so again, we'll be doing a full video on that to explain what we feed him, when we feed him and how we feed him. So stay tuned for more videos of Little Gus. Right, so now on to Rolo. Now, Rolo is our rescue crested gecko, and he is an adult. Now, he didn't have the correct husbandry at all, hence why he's a rescue, and he was mistreated. But, when we got him, we weighed him, and he was at 47. When he came into our care, he actually dropped weight to 43, and then 42. Now, we took him to the vet, so we got him checked over, we got him looked at, everything's in place, everything's how it should be. He was only, when we got him, eating... Um, powdered foods like Pangea, Apache, etc. We've now got him onto live food, but his weight just doesn't seem to be going up. Now, this could be because of old age or a internal parasite that you physically can't see, but hence why we got him all checked out. So, because we didn't know why he was going down, we seeked expert advice. That advice told us that there's just a thing that comes with age. Like an elderly person, they wouldn't ever gain weight, but they'd only ever lose it from being thinner and older. And that's exactly what has happened here with Rolo. Now, if it was a considerable jump from, say, 42 down to 35, then there'd obviously be a major problem. But it's pretty consistent from 43 to 42, and it doesn't really fluctuate too much. But because of that, that is always something to keep an eye on with him. But he's happy, he's healthy, we've got him fully checked out. So if you're ever unsure, always go to a vet and always seek the proper advice. But he's in there somewhere, chilling. And again, he comes out every single night. He's always exploring, he's always on the hunt. But yeah, he's doing good. Now, when it comes to how to weigh, there's a few different ways to do this. Firstly, you always want to do it on a hard surface. So once you've got your hard surface and your scales, these are just cooking scales. Go over to your animal that you want to weigh. Hello. Gently pick him up. And plop him on the scales. Make sure he tries to stay still, and he's coming in at 102. Now, it's not been a month since we weighed him, it's actually been less than that, but looking at his last weight of 91, he has already shot up. So, we know when we weigh this little guy at the end of the month, he is going to be doing super good. And he's also really, really cute. And he's wondering if he can eat the scales, which he can't. But yeah, so you always want to make sure it's on a hard surface, your animal is staying still, and Gus has given a perfect example of that, and that you're using the correct scales for the job. 
Now I understand that not every animal will fit on cooking scales, so this is what you've got to do for an alternative. Now little Gussie, after being a good little mascot, can go back, and he also needs some more food as well. But, for things like ball pythons, you use another cooking item, just a basic mixing bowl, place that on the scales, and then zero them out, so it goes on to zero, and then place your animal into the bowl. That will give you a much more accurate weight, and it will stop them from scurrying around so much. So that is two methods there to how to better weigh your animals. So guys, that is the video. It basically covers everything you need to know within the basics of the weight chart, why we have it, why we use it, what benefit it can do to us, as well as our animals, and other ways to deter and illnesses that you potentially couldn't spot. So hopefully you will get yourself one, if you haven't already that is, because I know a lot of people do. But other than that, I hope it has helped at least one of you. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in a couple of days with another new video.